When winter fell across war-torn Europe, warmth was more than comfort. It was survival. Soldiers froze in trenches, families huddled in bombed-out houses, and supply lines for fuel often vanished overnight. Yet in the middle of this chaos there emerged a quiet, ingenious solution, a formula so simple and effective that it could turn a small tin and a few household scraps into a life-saving heater. This is the forgotten Buitu candle formula, an improvised marvel that heated entire rooms, saved lives, and still holds its value today for preppers, survivalists, and history buffs who know that the old ways often worked best. For the next few minutes, we'll uncover how it worked, who used it, and how you can replicate it today using the same principles. Because when modern comforts fail, the knowledge buried in the past becomes your greatest ally. And this forgotten war candle is one of those hidden treasures. By 1942, both Axis and Allied civilians faced brutal winters with dwindling supplies. Coal shipments were intercepted or rationed, and electricity was unreliable. In London, blackout restrictions meant no visible light could escape at night. In Poland, Norway, and the Soviet countryside, temperatures dropped so low that frostbite and hypothermia claimed more lives than bullets. Ordinary people, farmers, soldiers, and refugees needed a source of heat that was portable, discreet, and required no electricity. That need gave rise to what became known as the war candle. It was not just a candle in the traditional sense, it was a compact controlled heat source made from a blend of wax, fat, and absorbent materials. These small improvised heaters could raise the temperature in a small shelter by several degrees, dry wet boots, and even warm food. For those hiding from patrols or surviving in ruined cities, that tiny flame meant the difference between life and death. Ah, the secret behind the formula lay in its rather ingenious dual-purpose design. It was both a light source and a radiant heat generator. You see, the typical version used during the war was built from, well, common materials scavenged from bombed homes, field kitchens or supply depots. Tin cans became the outer shell, usually old sardine tins, tobacco tins, or spent ration containers. Inside, strips of cardboard were rolled tightly into a spiral and soaked with melted wax or rendered animal fat. Once lit, the surface flame burned slowly and evenly releasing steady heat that could last for hours. Now. In England, civilians often use paraffin wax mixed with a small amount of cooking oil to extend burn time. On the Eastern Front, Soviet partisans and villagers, well, they relied on animal tallow or even butterfat, pressing it into cans lined with newspaper or cloth. When resources ran out entirely, a crude mix of axle grease, soap remnants and lamp oil could substitute for wax. The brilliance of the formula was its efficiency. The tightly packed cardboard acted as both wick and fuel delivery system. As the wax burned, heat radiated from the metal can, warming the immediate surroundings far better than a normal candle flame. Some soldiers even buried the base of the can in sand or clay to concentrate the heat upward creating a primitive but effective stove. Tests conducted after the war by British home front researchers showed that a three-inch tin candle could sustain a flame for up to 12 hours and raise the temperature of a sealed air raid shelter by as much as 5 degrees Celsius. It was modest, but in the freezing dark that was, well, life-changing. 
If you want to recreate the World War II candle heater today, the process remains strikingly similar. And honestly, it's still quite practical for anyone interested in historical survival techniques. So, to get started, you'll need a clean tin can, about the size of a tuna or soup can. Next, you cut or roll strips of corrugated cardboard so they fit snugly inside the can. The tighter you roll it, the steadier your flame will be, you know. After that, melt down some wax. Old candle stubs, paraffin or even beeswax will do the trick. And pour it slowly over the cardboard until it's fully absorbed. Just let it cool and harden, and you're all set. When you light it, the candle should burn with a wide, low flame. Place it on a heatproof surface or inside a brick-lined container, and you'll notice really quite quickly how the metal starts to radiate warmth. These days, some survivalists upgrade the formula a bit. Maybe add a few drops of essential oil for a nicer scent, or put a layer of aluminum foil beneath the can to reflect heat upward. Others will place a small clay flower pot upside down over it to trap and distribute the heat more evenly. A modern twist on an old wartime idea. This setup can easily warm a small tent, shed, or emergency shelter for several hours just using recycled wax and cardboard. It's certainly not a replacement for central heating but it's a perfect fallback when the power fails, or if you're working off-grid. In short, it still works, and that's rather remarkable. Every region adapted the formula to whatever was available. In rural France, families used the fat drippings from cooking. Lard, goose fat, even whale oil left over from old lanterns. Norwegian fishermen filled clay bowls with fish oil and floating wicks of twisted cloth, while soldiers in the Ardan used waxed ration paper to reinforce their makeshift heaters. One remarkable account from a British field medic in 1944 describes how wounded men were kept warm in underground shelters using nothing but a dozen improvised tin lamps filled with mutton fat and cotton bandages. The air grew heavy with the smell of smoke and grease, but those tiny flames pushed back the deadly cold long enough for help to arrive. It's easy to forget that these makeshift heaters were born out of ingenuity, not convenience. They were the product of a time when survival demanded creativity, and when knowledge of simple chemistry, how fat, oxygen and wick interacted, was as valuable as any weapon. You know, understanding how the World War II candle formula worked isn't just a matter of historical curiosity. It's, well, practical wisdom, really. The same principles apply in modern emergencies. Power outages, winter camping, disaster relief, or even off-grid living. With just a few cans, some wax, and a bit of cardboard, you can provide light and warmth when everything else fails. For instance, if you live in an area prone to blackouts, you can pre-make several of these candles and store them in a dry box. During a winter outage, lighting two or three in a small enclosed room can maintain livable warmth until power returns. If you're a camper or prepper, the same setup doubles as a compact cooking source. Just place a small metal cup over it to boil water or heat rations. And for history enthusiasts, recreating one using authentic wartime techniques is a hands-on way to connect with the realities of civilian survival during the 1940s. Every generation rediscovers the same truth. Technology changes, but human needs don't. 
warmth, safety, and light, those remain constant, and sometimes the simplest answers come from the hardest times. The lost WW2 candle formula reminds us of something profound, that survival often depends not on resources, but on knowledge. The people who created these candles didn't have modern tools or steady supplies. They had scarcity, fear and desperation. And yet they built solutions that lasted decades. That's the kind of mindset worth preserving. Today, as we face uncertain times and increasing dependence on fragile systems, Looking back to these forgotten front lines gives us more than history. It gives us perspective. Every flame that burned inside those tin cans during the war told the same story. Human resilience never goes out of style. If you value learning these forgotten techniques and the real stories behind them, don't forget to subscribe to Forgotten Front Lines and share this video with someone who loves history and preparedness as much as you do. Because the next time the lights go out, it's not technology that will save you. It's the kind of knowledge that once kept entire families alive by the glow of a single homemade flame.